If you're interested in what I'm about to say, all this information and much, much more can be found in my new book, The Common Sense Ethics of a Blue Collar Philosopher by S.G. Appleby at Publish America and other online bookstores. In this video, I would like to address the ongoing debate over whether or not the United States of America is a Christian nation. There's absolutely no doubt that the majority of the Founding Fathers called themselves Christians, but did they create a Christian nation? For this answer, we must look at our nation's founding documents. When we do, we find that not one time in the Declaration of Independence, the Constitution, the Bill of Rights, or the Federalist Papers is Christianity even mentioned. Not once. You would think that if the Founding Fathers were creating a Christian nation, they would have mentioned it at least once in this founding documents, would you not? But they don't. The complete and deliberate omission is the only argument I really need to prove they didn't create a Christian nation. After all, they certainly could have, and many states actually did write Christianity into their constitutions. Some even fought to have the preamble to the federal constitution changed. Uh, one state wanted, we, the people of the United States, humbly acknowledge Almighty God as the source of all authority and power in civil government, the Lord Jesus Christ as the governor of all, of all nations, and his revealed will as a supreme authority, in order to constitute a Christian government, do ordain and establish this Constitution of the United States. Certainly Christians wanting to create a Christian nation would have used a preamble like this instead of what they actually used, wouldn't they? So why didn't they? Obviously, although self-professed Christians, they knew the dangers of a monopolistic, uh, theocratic government, so they simply didn't want to create a strictly Christian nation. They wanted as much freedom of conscience and religion as possible. Of course, there was much influence from the Judeo-Christian moral traditions, uh, but when it came to the Founders' political perspectives, they were influenced much, much more by the Greco-Roman tradition than by the Judeo-Christian tradition. Even such concepts as republic and democracy came straight out of ancient Greece. Certainly nothing in the Bible leads one to think uh, government should be based on a constitution. The fact that this side of the story is almost always completely ignored in our society, outside of a university setting that is, just proves once again that the winner writes the history. Since most people in America consider themselves Christians, they pretty much dictate what and how history is taught, deliberately downplaying the influence Greco-Roman ideas had on the Founding Fathers and deliberately overplaying the influence of Judeo-Christian ideas. But let's get back to determining if the United States was, or is, a Christian nation. The problem here begins with determining what it means to be a Christian. I would assume that being a Christian means believing Jesus was the Christ and following his teachings. So, uh, let's see if America was founded on the teachings of Jesus by quoting some of his most basic moral teachings and principles. How about, love your enemy? Is this a moral principle followed by Americans? No. Was it ever? No. How about, love your neighbor as yourself? Is this a moral principle followed by Americans? No. Was it ever? No. How about, if a man steals your coat, give him the shirt off your back as well? Is this a moral principle followed by Americans? No. Was it ever? No. How about, do not resist him who is evil, but whoever slaps you on your right cheek, turn to him the other as well. Is this a, an American moral principle? No. Was it ever? No. What did Jesus teach about divorce? What therefore God has joined together, let no man separate. And... Whoever divorces his wife, except for immorality, and marries another woman, commits adultery. It doesn't sound to me like Jesus was too keen on allowing people to divorce. We certainly don't follow any of these teachings in America, do we? Now let's look at some of, the, of his teachings on the accumulation of wealth. No one can be my disciple who does not give up all his possessions. Sell all possessions and give to the poor. Do not lay up for yourself treasures on earth. Avoid greed in all its forms. It is easier for a camel to go through an eye of a needle than it is for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. Blessed are the poor, etc. Are any of these teachings on wealth practiced by Americans? No. 
Have they ever been? No. How about what Jesus uh, says in Matthew chapter 6, verse 19 through 34? I won't write the whole thing out here uh, because it would just take too long, but please read it for yourself. In essence, Jesus pre uh, teaches the exact opposite of the traditional pro Protestant work ethic and also disparages accumulating wealth once again. Jesus not only says, no one can serve two masters, for he will uh, hate one and love the other, or he will hold to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. And what is mammon? Wealth. He then goes on to say, don't worry about getting ahead in life. Therefore, do not be anxious about tomorrow, for tomorrow will take care of itself. Do Americans think like this? No. Have they ever? No. When it comes to accumulating wealth, Americans are, and always have been, the most anxious people on earth. I don't see anything wrong with it, but Jesus certainly did. Last but not least, Jesus said to be perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect. So what does being perfect mean? Well, according to Jesus, wouldn't it mean to follow his teachings? I mean, what else could it possibly mean? So, do Americans follow the teachings of Jesus? No. Have they ever followed the teachings of Jesus? No. Are our laws based on the teachings of Jesus? No. So to conclude that America was founded on the teachings of Jesus is not only wrong, but completely wrong. And add to that the New Testament teachings that came after Jesus. Uh, the book of Acts describes how wonderful the early church was. Not one of them claimed that anything belonging to him was his own, but all property belonged to all. Does this sound like a moral, economic, or political principle America was founded on? Or how about uh, from Corinthians, let no one seek his own good, but that of his neighbor. Does that sound like a moral, economic, or political principle uh, America was founded upon? First Timothy tells us the love of money is the root of all evil, and that the rich people need to be rich in good works and be ready to distribute. Are these teachings are, aren't these teachings more communistic than capitalistic? So please tell me which Christian principles the United States was supposedly founded on, because they're certainly not the ones I've read in my, the New Testaments I own. I do see the Judeo influence in, on America from the Judeo Christian tradition, Old Testament principles such as don't murder, steal, lie, cheat, etc. But I fail to see the Christian influence. Remember, Christians refer to them as the Old and the New Testaments for a reason. So no, America is not and never was a Christian nation. It's simply a nation full of so-called Christians. Not only that, but in fact, America became the greatest nation in history in spite of its Christian heritage, not because of it. America became the most militarily powerful nation on earth because it did the exact opposite of what Jesus taught to do concerning using physical force. And America became the wealthiest nation on earth because it did the exact opposite of what Jesus taught to do concerning the accumulation of wealth. Isn't that ironic? If you don't believe me, simply read the teachings of Jesus on both subjects. I would also like to point out that when Christians attempt to use the argument that the uh, intention of the Founding Fathers was to create a government that guaranteed freedom of religion, not freedom from religion, they're only telling part of the story. Obviously, there's no country in the world where people are completely free from the influence uh, of some type of religion. And that's all right because people have the right to their own beliefs and opinions. But there's a big difference between private citizens and the private sector taking sides in religious, religious matters and the government taking sides in religious matters. No, the founders didn't attempt to free people from religion. In fact, most mistakenly saw religion as a moral necessity. However, they did attempt to free people from the government establishing or respecting religion. And this isn't just my interpretation, it's explicitly stated in the First Amendment. I'd also like to bring something else to your attention. Have you ever noticed that the uh, religious leaders who claim there's no such thing as a separation of church and state are the very people who demand a separation of church and state when it comes to paying taxes? Thank you.